Is it Neo? Is it Retro? Hard to grasp, but all the more exciting. This event sheds a light on a movement that does not want to be a movement. What the hell is this good for? It's simple. Forget about the question whether it's art, politics, philosophy or madness. Drop the idea of creative or intellectual property of the individual. Trash the ego and start a research. Grab the commonplace, the subversive, the absurd and the banal and look at it from all sides. Experiment, analyze, take risks and most of all, don't take yourself too seriously. This was the request. Come and witness the outcomes. Maybe shocking, perhaps hilarious. Brought to you by Luther Blissett, the open pop star, Neanderthaler performances, Luther Blissett, the psychogeographer, the Acid Police Noise Ensemble, Martin House, psychogeophysics for beginners, Rick van der Dood, DJ Stront, and tentatively a convenience. Special feature, N. O. Kansin presents her book A Neoist Research Project, the first complete resource book on neoism, and neoist films from past and present. Entertainment and Irritainment. Neoism. And neoism is something what's happening now, but it's more like in the future. And um, the thing is, it's more on uh, the even days. So more on Tuesdays and on Thursdays and on Saturdays and on Sundays. And um, it's quite new. Some people know about it, but uh, most of the people uh, think they know about it, but they don't know about it. And lots of people, they know about it, but they don't know that they know about it.
is rather confusing. I, I think people have distorted the uh, size and shape of UFOs. And when this thing landed beside me on the table, you I, ordered the door. I immediately identified it as a as a UFO. Yes. And uh, having the pieces and tasted it to see if it was made of a substance which I was familiar with. I tasted it, and it tasted sweet and extremely edible, so, um, well, I'm going to uh, start to eat it, because um, I'm quite sure that although it is an alien craft from another planet, I'm sure that our species on this planet will be able to eat it. You're an occupant. Never get there, as we go by some boring monuments. I wish to go. Never, 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 never get there. I wish for a major car crash, or at least for a flat tire. I pray for instant disaster, for destruction and fire, destruction and fire, destruction and fire, 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 fire. I wish to do my best and follow my father's head. I wish to know that I'm going to collapse and sag in dust. I wish the soccer girl was born.
and then the one who had shit on the floor uh, lied. And as I was, as I was telling earlier, um, this is the first instance of a lie in an ape language, in the ape language, in the document ape language repertoire. And in, because of this reason, it's literature, because it <coughs> forms the language. And you go back to uh, Percy Shelley, 18th century English poet, who wrote something like, uh, poetry has nothing to do with, I forgot the exact quote, but um, he, he wrote something like, poetry has nothing to do with dictionaries. Poetry has to do with minting the language, inventing new words for new concepts. And this, and this, um, in this conversation, this is actually exactly what's happening. Um, now you'll say, I can probably guess which is the, which one is the ape and which one is the human. But the point is, um, and this is something I was already pointing out, but it should make specific now, is that um, there's another reason why the why the distinction why the, the principal idea of teaching human language to an ape is flawed. Is flawed, and this is if you look at the at all the at all the at all the evidence and all the research by various projects. You'll find out um, that there's basically two languages being uh, taught or being uh, generated. So on the one hand, there's a research language, which is uh, tends to be English. This is a word. This is an object. This is the word for it, and it's in English or a symbol. But it always gets down to uh, English. Uh, but if you look at how this actually works, you'll see that. Um, Humans will talk apish, so they will grunt and make um, um, ape, ape noises. And you'll also see um, apes are very good with uh, body language, and you'll see that humans are mimicking that as well. And at the same time, uh, even though apes have difficulty um, vocalizing in the way we do, they still try to make an effort. So what you get is not human language used by ape. You get this sort of mixture of languages in which there's human language, there's ape language, there's humans trying to do ape language, there's apes trying to do human language, and all this gets together in one big mess. Um, and this is, the, I, I think, but I mean, you won't find it in the literature, but I think this is a real, um, like the real um, component of primate poetics. And this is not a taught language, this is a language which was generated by the need to communicate. You don't, have, you, don't need, you don't speak the same language, but because you need to deal with each other on a daily basis, you somehow find a way to communicate. And this is language in its own right, but it's not trained or it's not taught. It just rises up between between all the people involved. Sometimes it's even, it's not just one. It's not a chimpanzee and human. It's a chimpanzee, a bonobo, and a human. Maybe even a orangutan thrown in. But there's already this whole. Um, and then of course all these different apes have their own different sets of communication. Um, so you see, there's this whole. Babylonian tower, but it doesn't break down. It builds up. You get language where there is not, where there is none. So when you read, when you when you look at these um, written down um, conversations, it's like well, you know um, the, the the metaphor comes from somewhere else. But it's like uh, you want to you want to know what you know what the, you want to know what the party was like. And you look at the ashtray. So another example. Um, this is a bit long, I'm not going to read it to you. But it is really significant because it's the first time that in this um, get together language, um, the ape asks for a word. And this, I mean, this is important because it shows that it's not just clever hunts, as it sometimes is called, it, and they're not memorizing things. They actually understand what they're doing and they can ask for new words when they need some. And in fact, Apes do invent their own words, as we will see, see shortly. This is another one. Um, apes are social social animals. This is true for chimpanzees. This is even more true uh, for bonobos. It's less true for uh, gorillas and orangutans. This is a conversation between a bonobo and a human. Milk, sugar. I get in a lot of trouble if I gave you tea with sugar. Give milk, sugar. No, I get in a lot of trouble. I want milk, sugar. No, Monty, I get in much trouble. Here's some milk. Milk, sugar, secret. So, um, there's something which we already saw before, which is this sort of gimme, gimme, gimme. But there's also this secret. Let's make a deal. I know you're not allowed to give me sugar, but give it to me and I won't talk about it. Which is another level of understanding, but also a level of uh, building trust or building uh, mutual understanding. 
So it's another, it's another evidence of language, and it's also another um, example. It's, it's another, it's another greatest hit in the repertoire of primate poetics. It's the first time on file um, where the ape tries to strike a deal. Um, I don't know how many are there. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen different ways of saying the same thing. Now this is linguistic creati creati creativity, if nothing else. Here's another good example of uh, poetics in the Shellian um, definition, event words. I mean, you want to you communicate something that you don't have a word present, well, event one. Um, and, this, and this happens through all projects and every, every ape does it. And it, and it can be quite good. Um, my favorite is probably nipples, which is... Um, <laughs> Coined by Gorilla Monty uh, for humans. I'm not quite sure um, why that is, but I do know that Monty had
has no body, is not born and cannot die. <laughs> you are not who you think you are. You are that which has no body. Unbound by time, space, causality. Partake of the tree of life with me. <laughs>
Unwillingly, non recognition of authority. There is no neoism as long as one makes use in sporadic fashion and at random of a manifesto here, a poster there, a meeting here, that is not enough. That is why presenting the book here at Warm feels awkward. But it is people that matter. And therefore, it is good to however be here. Page 45 of the book. Medium, use it. The effectiveness of the used medium in our being active matters. Neoism cannot operate from inside the vacuum cleaner. Therefore, this jolly place of a certain center isn't perfect. But who cares if we understand that? The effectiveness of the used medium can only be seen over a period of time and by particular recognition. If you can apply your medium, you can make the now always surprising. If you just make a manifesto for the sake of it, you will only and but only arrive in the uninteresting spectacle of symbolic language. The strengthened use of media places the logics of rigidity in an alternative mood. It is impossible. Distrust every attender to a newest event. Trust only people. Neglect artificial forces by not believing in, symbolic, in symbols or symbolic speech. A newest, a newest unwillingly doesn't recognize or translate symbolic language, textual or pictorial. We know already that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Work together around 2, instead of being confirmed that 2 is it. 
Therefore, some Neoists move, moved to Neoast, wanting to drift away from is that sounds too defined. We want to enjoy the two together and find out what it excludes and what knowledge it delivers us. Is it a naive view on reality? Naivety is refusing to see language as to be, as to be translated particles, symbols. There are too many valuable particles around. She picks something from the box. It's a can. She shakes it and picks something out.